against. Okay. Got it. Really? What did Luke Skywalker do? About one more minute, and then I will explain what you're doing. And we're getting done. I know Dylan, there's a lot more than that. You gotta scroll down just so you know. Well, bro, really? That's something my 13 year old would have done. <coughs> Make it an observation, that's all. Well, I don't know. I'm joking. <laughs>
Alright, people. Uh, if you did not finish, that's okay. Uh, this is just your making notes so that you have something to speak to. Okay? Uh, so we're going to go real quick with question number one. I'm just going to have like three people and name like two or three names that they recognize. Am I looking for anyone? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Chris, uh, what do you got? What are maybe two names that you recognize? Mark Swain is one of them. Okay. One, one more?
Let's do this. We're only going to answer questions one and three, so don't even worry about question number two. Okay. Uh, but it's super important that you understand the two worlds that this person is going to be describing. Uh, I am going to ask that my Spanish speakers help me out to when I get to some of the Spanish words that we will encounter. Uh, this person is Puerto Rican, right? Uh, and therefore, some of the things that they refer to are Spanish and or African in origins. All right. So two names, two worlds. You should have that open right there. And then just so you know, the questions you're responsible for. Uh, what do you think Jonathan Rodriguez means when he uses the phrase two names, two worlds? What two worlds does his name represent? And then we're going to jump down to three, and you're going to list uh, ten things or words that he uses to describe himself. All right? All right. Can I get a volunteer to read? No volunteers? This is a volunteerless class. Come on. Tell were you going to volunteer and then change your mind? No. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to get bored listening to me all year. Okay. So, uh, in the below, Jonathan Rodriguez reflects on his name. How does his name place him in the world? How is it a mass shield or container? All right. All right. Uh, make sure that's open. You're following along, please. Hi, I'm John. No, Jonathan. Wait, Jonathan Rodriguez. Hold on, Jonathan Rodriguez. My name, two names, two worlds. The duality of my identity is like two sides of the same coin. With two worlds, there should be plenty of room. But where do I fit? Where can I sit? Is this seat taken or is that seat taken? There never is quite enough room, is there? Two names, two worlds. Where do I come from? Born in the Washington Heights, New York City, but raised in good old Connecticut. The smell of fresh lingwood grass, on the leaves. I guess Spanish speaker to uh, help me out. He's going to be my go to uh, helper. I'm hearing the deliberation over here, Melissa. Uh, Alex. Just pronounce it extremely long and then someone will correct you. I do that already with so many words. I don't, I don't want to disrespect uh, what's happening here. Paul Toko. All right. Bro, I could have done that. Uh, Melissa, I'm going to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Melissa, laugh, fresh. Nice. Rice and beans. The sound of Billy Joel's piano keys and the rhythm from. I'm from the struggle for broken dreams and false promises of houses with white picket fences and 2.5 kids, the mountains, and, and the mango trees. I'm not the typical kid from suburbia, nor am I a smooth Latin cat. My head's in the clouds, my nose in a comic book. I get lost in the stories and art. It's kind of awkward, so talking to the ladies is hard. I listen to Fernando and Adventura. Okay, close. Every chance I get, but don't make me dance. I don't know the steps I've learned throughout these past years. Excuse me, I've learned through these, throughout these past years. I'm a mix of cultures, a mix of races. Nice. You can find me in the parts of a song, in. You can feel my African roots. My kind of screams. And the melodies and lyrics are a reminder of my beautiful Spanish heritage. I am African, Chicano, and Spanish. A fanboy, an athlete, a nerd, a student, an introvert. I'm proud to say, I'm proud to say I am me. I'm beginning to appreciate that I am. I'm beginning to see that this world is also a beautiful mix of ideas, excuse me, people, ideas, and stories. Is this seat taken or is that seat taken? Join me and take a seat. Here we'll write our own story. Okay, so he does a lot of describing of himself, right? Uh, is he like single dimensional or is there kind of a lot to him? A lot. There is a lot to him, okay? Uh, so he kind of categorizes himself into two worlds though. So that's what I want you to consider when you answer these questions. So question one and question three. What skip question two? Anybody heard Smooth Latin Cat before? That's super outdated. Latin Cat, Smooth Latin Cat. Nobody? You've heard that before? Yeah. Most people don't. It just means that you're good with the ladies, right? That you're in Latin background and that you're a smooth talker, if you will. All right, but questions one and three is all I'm looking for. Question three, both pointing 10 words that he uses to describe himself. Do this with people at your table. Uh, Y'all got about two and a half minutes. Go. Uh, I, I think Jonathan means there is more to the name of the There is more meaning to the name. So I feel like he, he like, values his name. Like, 
describing it. Uh, the two worlds. I think he means uh, his first name represents something, while his last name represents another part of the church. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And he dies his
Good morning. Uh, just a reminder, uh, personality test questions will be tomorrow, so it looks like most of you have done it, but it's submitted and not done. Uh, we're going to continue on today with uh, the next sections, but also I revise, uh, you've got a couple more days to finish it up and try to turn that on next week. So we're going to finish up this week and then um, take our test early next week while we're reviewing before we do that. Okay, so um, just give you a heads up on that for the materials. Um, also, there's several of you who still need to turn your um, your forms for um, Gold West. I have Jocelyn, Yurelli, Leonardo, Luke, Edwin, Mitch, Aiden, and Julia. Anybody have any forms to turn in for me? Uh, we need to get those in, guys, so we can get you registered. So please, if I mention your name, get those turned in. We're going to try to all get you pre-registered for the course and ready to go, okay? So try to get those in so we can. Um, we're just going to keep bothering you until you turn them in, basically. All right, uh, so then the next section, uh, reminder, you have to uh, open the questions and be following along. Please answer the questions as we do the materials. And um, try to stay caught up on this. We'll be turning this in as well uh, when we take the test. So. Um, we, we started talking about um, depression and, you know, um, some of the side effects and causes and problems with that. We're going to talk about some of the uh, issues associated with aging, loss of psychological health, and then some of the uh, issues of depression like suicide um, issues, and then also look a little bit about treatment options, okay? So, um, one of the main, major problems as people age is their One of the uh, problems with people age is that they're, um, they, they, they tend to go through issues with aging, right? So the loss of function and things like that can be depressing. I mentioned the term here, dementia, also Alzheimer's, which is a loss of function in the brain. So that's a difficult thing to deal with as well, because sometimes you forget things, you, things don't work as well, you can't hear as well. So uh, brain malfunctioning, not to mention sometimes health is a problem. And then also these two, ter these two terms, what are you going to agree? Um, so a lot of older people, they tend to they'll lose spouses, so people will die that they know, or friends. And so they get sad about that, right? So depression can be a problem for older people. Also, a lot of them are maybe in homes, things like that, where they're not connected to the ones they love and their family members. So that can be depressing as well. So as elderly uh, struggle with depression because of these issues. So the first question is, what are some problems that elderly face as far as mental health and illness? Uh, dementia, or even grief, would be the definitions you would use, okay? So just know that, you know, Elderly people need support, they need uh, love with their family, so if you have older people in your family, just make sure that uh, those people are keeping in touch with them and they like to hear from you, and uh, you know, they, they need to be supported as well. So the three issues that they go through uh, are listed right there. Um, I just put them up there, dementia, or even in grief. If you want to copy those in or just type them in, that's fine. Um, it's up to you, but those are the ones you need to answer for, okay? So that's another one. So outward signs that they're actually struggling. 
So people with uh, these issues, they, they end up um, causing problems, right? So direct or indirect statements, they may say something, or you may see something like you post on social media, that they may say something about harming themselves or that they don't, they don't want to live anymore. They may um, talk about giving away their possessions, so they're going to give something away, like where they're going, right? So you can have this one, and um, it's like, well, where are you going? Well, they're planning on doing something, right? Preoccupied things with death. So the main point is, if you know somebody and they're struggling with depression or you know, they're issuing things or they're making statements, uh, take them seriously and, and you know try to reach out to them and talk with them and try to get them help. Now, if you think they're an immediate threat of it, uh, you want to uh, make sure that you support them and you get a parent involved or something like that. So that's the main thing. So along with that, um, let me show you the video that we're going to watch. This uh, kind of talking about some of the signs and symptoms of depression, which is also related to. close to 10% of adults struggle with depression. But because it's a mental illness, it can be a lot harder to understand than, say, high cholesterol. One major source of confusion is the difference between having depression and just feeling depressed. Almost everyone feels down from time to time. Getting a bad grade, losing a job, having an argument, even a rainy day can bring on feelings of sadness. Sometimes there's no trigger at all. It just pops up out of the blue. Then circumstances change, and those sad feelings disappear. Clinical depression is different. It's a medical disorder, and it won't go away just because you want it to. It lingers for at least two consecutive weeks and significantly interferes with one's ability to work, play, or love. Depression can have a lot of different symptoms. A low mood, loss of interest in things you normally enjoy, changes in appetite, feeling worthless or excessively guilty sleeping either too much or too little, poor concentration, restlessness or slowness, loss of energy, or recurrent thoughts of suicide. If you have at least five of those symptoms, according to psychiatric guidelines, you qualify for a diagnosis of depression. And it's not just behavioral symptoms. Depression has physical manifestations inside the brain. First of all, there are changes that could be seen with the naked eye and x-ray vision. These include smaller frontal lobes and hippocampal volumes. On a more micro scale, depression is associated with a few things. The abnormal transmission or depletion of certain neurotransmitters, especially serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine, blunted circadian rhythms, or specific changes in the REM and slow wave parts of your sleep cycle, and hormone abnormalities, such as high cortisol and deregulation of thyroid hormones. But neuroscientists still don't have a complete picture of what causes depression. It seems to have to do with a complex interaction between genes and environment, but we don't have a diagnostic tool that can accurately predict where or when it will show up. And because depression symptoms are intangible, it's hard to know who might look fine but is actually struggling. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, it takes the average person suffering with a mental illness over 10 years to ask for help. But there are very effective treatments. Medications and therapy complement each other to boost brain chemicals. In extreme cases, electroconvulsive therapy, which is like a controlled seizure in the patient's brain, is also very helpful. Other promising treatments, like transcranial magnetic stimulation, are being investigated too. So if you know someone struggling with depression, encourage them gently to seek out some of these options. You might even offer to help with specific tasks, like looking up therapists in the area or making a list of questions to ask a doctor. To someone with depression, these first steps can seem insurmountable. If they feel guilty or ashamed, point out that depression is a medical condition, just like asthma or diabetes. It's not a weakness or a personality trait, and they shouldn't expect themselves to just get over it any more than they could will themselves to get over a broken arm. If you haven't experienced depression yourself, avoid comparing it to times you felt down. Comparing what they're experiencing to normal temporary feelings of sadness can make them feel guilty for struggling. Even just talking about depression openly can help. For example, 
Research shows that asking someone about suicidal thoughts actually reduces their suicide risk. Open conversations about mental illness help erode stigma and make it easier for people to ask for help. And the more patients seek treatment, the more scientists will learn about depression, and the better the treatments will get. All right, so, you know, they talk about the causes of depression and, and that, that there's health, and one of the risks is that people who are depressed can have self-harm or can commit suicide. So let's say a person is, you know, you think a person might be at risk for this. What are some things you can do? Well, once again, look at what they're saying or they're posting online. Uh, if they're making threats, if they're making threats like I'm gonna do this, then take it seriously, right? Listen to them, talk with them, and if, if you think they're in immediate danger, you wanna keep them on the phone or text them, you get a parent involved in it. If you think they might be doing something right now, then call 911. So once again, take them seriously and then you know try to keep them engaged. So um, and listen to them, but um, a lot of times it's hard to like talk them out of things, but you can just like talk with them about their problems and let them know. And then of course just try to get a parent involved if you can. So ask them if they have problems, don't put them down, think about alternatives, and then let somebody know. So um, once again, if you see somebody talking about this or, or acting in a certain way, then it's something you need to take seriously. And um, you can always just encourage them to, to reach out for help. Um, we'll talk about uh, different types of uh, help here, but we have a lot of resources available in school and things like that also, where people can get help um, from counseling as well. So, um, so that's the thing. You want somebody to help you, or you can help somebody who's talking to you. So if you see any sign or signals, let somebody know, right? Somebody's reporting doing something bad online or you heard about, maybe you want to let them adult know or report it to a school official or something like that. And that way you're going to save a life or possibly take care of that person. Okay, so you want to do your best to do that. All right, so what are some of the warning signs that you might see from people that are thinking about maybe harming themselves or suicidal or depressed or uh, anybody want to throw those out? Warning signs? Uh, or I call people. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, changing mood or behavior. Mood, behavior, okay. Anything else? Yeah. Deal with, uh, deal with less of your loved one. Yeah, loss of loved one, so grief, right? You're sad about something, so if you're sad, you can be depressed. Anything else? Any other signs or symptoms that you see something, somebody struggling with this stuff that you saw? There's a whole list of them. Yeah, well, what else? Uh, change in sleeping, eating, and appearance. Right, so any changes that you see, right? So they're not sleeping well, they're having issues eating, maybe they're not taking care of themselves, like they're maybe not showering and they're not dressing and they're just kind of like they don't care. So if you see those changes, so here at school we look for, uh, you know, we look for people who uh, like miss a lot of class or their grades are dropping as signs and symptoms that there's something going on. So th those could be things where that person might be reached out to and, and get given assistance, right? So once again, um, if you see these things in a friend, you can check in with them. Um, you can talk to them about it, maybe you can ask them, hey, maybe you want to go get some help, you want to talk to somebody about it. Those are things that you can help out, okay? So those are things that you want to do. All right, so when, are, uh, when, when do you think you need to get uh, treatment? So one of the, some of the treatment options that you can go to. First off, I want to let you know that any of these mental illnesses or mental health, you can't really diagnose yourself or have somebody diagnose you. You have to go to a doctor first. So don't try to diagnose yourself. If you think you have an issue, first thing you do is go to your doctor. Um, your doctor will help you uh, evaluate to see if you are. So they'll evaluate you, and they can see if you have an issue and if you need treatment. So the step number one, go to the doctor, and then you can look at treatment options. Okay, so what are the treatment options? Uh, first thing is you have to decide, uh, a lot of people like in the video, they said some people wait up for 10 years before they get help. So they struggle with it, right? And so once again, if you are having problems, then go talk to your doctor. After your doctor, um, your doctor will do a physical exam and check up, they'll ask you questions. They want to rule out any physical causes, right? So after that, if they say, oh, maybe you have some of the symptoms of depression or not, then you can talk about treatment options. So that's what they do. So doctor first, and then after that, there's different types of professionals. So as far as people who prescribe medication, which is one of the options, that either has to be your doctor or a uh, psychiatrist. They're trained uh, doctors. So to get medication, you can go to one of those two. Now, just to talk with somebody, you're talking about a therapist. So like a psychologist or a counselor, or a therapist, those are the people you can just talk to about issues. So that doesn't really take anything, you just schedule time with them and you go. Now there's therapists outside of school, the thing is they cost money and pay for the insurance. We do have a lot of opportunities for that here at school, there's a lot of resources. So you can sign up for that, you can check with your counselor, your teacher, if you're struggling, you can always do that. So we have a lot of things here 
So once again, don't feel afraid to you or one of your friends or whatever if you're having problems. Check in with them if you need to, okay? So care therapy, counseling is great. That's one of the signs. And then sometimes if you're suffering a lot, you might need to get med uh, medication. Um, so those are, those are the options, right? So we're gonna talk about different types of therapy, but therapy is usually a one-on-one -on -one counseling with somebody, talking about your issues and getting that out. Um, the other type of therapy might be group therapy or whatever, but um, that's one part. And then the other part is if you're struggling with like a lot of pressure or anxiety, uh, sometimes medications can help. Just realize that all medications, um, they, might not, they might work for you, they might not. There's different types, so you try different ones, and realize there's also some side effects to medications as well. So some people don't like the side effects. But if you're struggling with a lot of depression and it's gonna cause you an issue, then maybe you should let me try, try that out. So realize that it's not, it's gonna, not gonna treat everybody, it's not a perfect cure-all, but it does help some people, right? And, but there are some side effects. So some people are just opposed to medications, and I get, I understand that, but if you're really struggling, then you should, you should try it to see if it helps you out, right? Because a lot of these have been around a while and things like that. So it's up to you, but your doctor has to prescribe the medicines for you to get, to get help, okay? Um, now, there's some other things you can do to just help your overall mental health and mood. Uh, we're gonna talk about that when we get to the stress chapter, but things like sleep, good diet, right, exercise, those all help with your mood and mental health. So if you wanna take care of yourself, that's gonna help your mental state more than other things. So those are the options. So as far as counseling go, there's a one-on-one -on -one individual, that's the most common. You can have a group, if you have a group of people talking um, about a common thing. Um, the one I'm going to down here, cognitive therapy is usually used for people like uh, anxiety to change the way they're thinking. So uh, cognitive therapy is, um, you know, used sometimes. So once again, we have uh, counselors here, you can talk to you, you see the sign up, you talk to your counselor, um, and they can help out. Um, and then stress reduction, so mindfulness is uh, things like uh, meditation, breathing techniques, relaxation techniques. You may have done some of these in some classes. Those are just ways to reduce stress. So reducing stress, getting sleep, um, eating, exercising, all those things are really important for your mental health. Um, I talked about the importance of sleep because people who suffer from mental health illness problems usually have problems with sleep as well. So they don't get enough sleep, and it's a vicious cycle. They don't get enough sleep, and their mental health suffers, right? So they have to sleep. They have to address their mind in order to recover. And another way to do that is to exercise. It's important for all energy. And then uh, total relaxation techniques. So there's lots of things you can do. Mindfulness is just kind of how you relax. We're going to talk about that in the next chapter, which is stress and stress reduction. Okay? So those are the therapy uh, examples. So what are some examples of uh, feelings and behaviors that might people want to uh, seek a mental health professional? So any others out there you want to go through or? behaviors or thoughts that you might want to see uh, help. So what do you guys think? Anybody want to chime in or should we just call people? Yeah. Uh, feelings of constant guilt. Guilt, right, shame. Um, you know, any of those emotional feelings where you have problems, anything else? What else? What are some, some thoughts or feelings that you might have that maybe you need to go see help? Let me call somebody here. About uh, Mitch, what do you think? What are some other things? Work on taking care of it. 
Okay. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. Um, pluses and minuses to the various treatment options. Well, I would say uh, therapy is, is usually a positive, but sometimes you can't you can find you can't find a therapist in light. So in that case, they go try to find another one. There's lots of them. So if you, you don't get along with one of them, they don't work for you, find somebody else. Right? Um, also the cost involved, which is nice is you have free therapy available here. You have to sign up for it. But once again, we have that available. So uh, there's sometimes there's cost involved, sometimes you don't like the therapist, you can get another one. There's lots of them, right? So find one that you like and that that, that works for you. Uh, the other uh, uh, downsides, medication sometimes can help, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have side effects that people don't like. So it might be like, uh, if you take a medication, yeah, it might help with depression when it causes other issues, right? So some people like, they can feel numb. There's also sexual dysfunction associated with some uh, medications as well that some people don't like. So once again, um, it's not a cure-all, but if you're severely depressed and you take them and you feel better, then it can help you get your life back. So sometimes people do those things, right? So those are things to think about. So just think about those things. Uh, and once again, I just want to encourage all of you to, if you're struggling or you know somebody who's struggling, then, then you go get help and feel better, right? You don't have to struggle with it. Just try to get help for your, your issues. That way you can move on and improve your life and everything like that. So that's, that's what we want. Okay? All right, so make sure you're staying caught up with the uh, uh, questions and all that stuff. Make sure you have the first round of test done. Um, as far as everybody goes, you guys have started that. And most of you make sure you signed up with an account. Um, remember, there's six modules here. I know it'll take a couple, two, three days to get this done, but each module you need to get 70% on the quiz. So please just get through the modules. Don't spend a lot of time on them. Just get through them and take the quiz at the end and get 70%. Okay, if you have any issues with Everfly or logging in or if you forgot something, let me know so I can fix it for you. But try to write that down because you're going to be using it like several times a semester. So <coughs> make sure you remember your login, your password, and your username, okay? So if anybody has problems with this, please let me know because I'll help you all over your account stuff. So. All right, so please continue on those two things. Uh, and then we'll continue tomorrow. We've got a couple of days to finish up the chapters. Having trouble with their ever five, please let me know and let me log in. You need to bring your Chromebook out though.
Anybody need help with login? Jolly with login. Just make sure you get through the modules.
Somebody else says they left it in here because they didn't have a lock. Yeah. It's not mine. I would like to probably break my back trying to ride that thing. It'd be so bad. Huh? Okay, wonderful students of my fifth period class. Can I please have your attention? And by having your attention, I mean you know, get ready for after this thing. Would you if we uh, giving your eyes and ears to the speaker and eliminating all distractions such as closing your phone book 45 degrees and putting your phone away. <sighs> Thank you, Amber. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jesus. Appreciate it. All right, guys. You have your phone out and AirPod in and your Chromebook go. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, those ways. Hey. Sir, what's up? Dis disrespectful. How are you today, sir? So disrespectful. How's your day, sir? My day is excellent. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Thank you for asking. Oh, you're welcome. How is your day? Dude, <laughs> off the up. I need to be honest. It is such a different section over there when you're not over there talking. It's like night and day. Night and day. All right. So my day is excellent. How's yours? It's okay. Yeah. How's everybody's day going? Good. Good. Thank you for responding, Amber. I appreciate it. Are you guys okay over there? Yeah? Everybody's good? Jesus, are you getting bullied today? Good. Angel? No? Xavier? Up to y'all? What's that? You good? Do you guys have anything you would like to share with the class today? Nothing? I don't even like to tell a joke. Give a joke. Give a joke. Very complicated. Good job. All right, guys. Super easy day today. Active listening. First round lesson. First round lesson. What was that? First round lesson. Yeah. Who's your team again? Rogers. We didn't make the wrong We got an extra fan. I just can't even believe this. He has someone like at the bottom of the pack. Talking about people like levels above them. It's okay though. I kind of, I kind of like the Chargers though. I'm kind of they're growing on me. I know people really like them in San Diego, but now that they're in LA, I'm, I'm trying to San like what they're growing on. San Diego better. Do you like San Diego better? Yeah, I do too. But you guys can be in some cool. So you guys can be in practice facility down here. Yeah, I heard about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I think it's cool. And your quarterback, I like your quarterback. Herbert, that's Huber. Herbert. Herbert. This period's gonna go by fast. This period's gonna go by so fast. You wanna know why? Yeah. Because it's late start, it's shorter period. We really don't have that much work. There's one thing I need to ask you guys though. Would you guys rather do a look at with the vocab words at the beginning of the class or the end of class? The one? Do you guys want to do beginning or do you want to get all your work done and then play it then? Yeah, so we only have one assignment today. It's interactive pages 92 and 93. It's just the vocab pages. So I left extra time for you to finish up any of the two assignments from yesterday. So yesterday we had the essential question in Google Classroom. 
and then we have the definitions and sentences in Google Classroom. You can finish those up, make sure they're turned in, and then do interactive pages 92 and 93. And then if we can finish about the last 10 minutes before class, then we can play a quick flick again. All right? Any questions? Just post one. Who is this music? I'll put some music on. Would you like to pick what we're going to listen to today? Uh, no, I'm good. I want to ask what we're going to Oh, you, what, you don't like a class? Oh, you don't like to listen to music? Which class you got to do it on your own? Because no, that no, one's no. individual. No, like, that thing's really like an Okay, can I keep? Oh, it's because I don't feel like everybody likes the same type of music. No, what type of music are you listening to? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what type of music do you listen to? <laughs> I like Rob Pie. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, no, no why is music I'm playing, which is, it's a song we know, but without the words, it's just the, yeah, no. Yeah, no. I don't like to do that, but I try to do it because it's less distracting because there's not words in it, like, I know a few students throw, like, the words of songs are what's distracting to them because they listen to it, you know, and distract the words, but, you guys want to pick what, what genre of music should we listen to today, guys, while we work? Martin, you want to listen to Taylor Swift? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, no? Okay. Sorry. I don't know if it's my least favorite. I don't think I have a least favorite. I've done it. So, I say this like, because I do like this genre, like when I'm working out and doing stuff, but it's my least favorite music to listen to, and that'd be like, kind of like, but I like it for certain situations when I'm running or lifting, I like to listen to it, but I'll never listen to it outside of that. And that's like techno, like techno stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what they call it now. Dubstep, techno stuff, I don't know what it's called. Dubtronic? Electronic? I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. Yeah. It used to be techno. I know there's way more genres now that go into that. I don't know. But something along those lines. You know what we should listen to today? What? I want some country music. Oh, 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 I like the country's cool. The story is amazing. Oh, I don't have my techno music. What do you want to listen to? Your pick. Anything but country. Anything but country. I agree. Girl. Girl. But I like jazz. I guess. You could pick more. No. I mean, it's not like it's better than the Disney music. Yes? Yeah. So can I listen to my own music? Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I really don't like jazz. So the interactive pages are over here. Interactive 92, 93. Finish up the Google Classroom assignment. Uh, I'm also going to post on Google Classroom just so you guys know when you'll have it for the unit. I'm going to stop having you guys make your Quizlet set. I'm just going to share a Quizlet set with this uh, unit's vocab words so that you can study them in your free time and be ready for them for the test, okay? Great conversation. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. I know you girls. I, I appreciate you guys doing those like sarcasm ones. It's still, it's still active listening because I know still know you're responding to what's being said. Right?
<clears throat> I said to Arnold, I thought I was. Oh, really? That's so nice of you. You're so nice, guys. Yeah, that's, that's why. That makes sense. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why it's so quiet when he's not here. You guys are lost without him. That makes so much That's why it's in the power in the chat. You know, just, just by him being here, it makes the back. Yeah. I don't know. No, I'm good. Go ahead. You guys feel the same way, Angel? Is it? Was it? Like when Oscar was gone, you guys just don't feel like the same person? It's just not as happy without him around? That's crazy. Yeah, I feel like the happiness you bring to you. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to Yeah. But you take away mine when you talk during construction.
o'clock in your free time. If you can't decide between those two options, then you may redo my job and bring up the group.
have free time for the rest of the class, or would you like to play a game with Blitz it, or want to see them do it?
former President Donald Trump held a commanding lead in the polls coming in for Monday night. Trump made it clear to his supporters that he didn't just want to win, he wanted to win big, urging Iowans to show up for him no matter the weather. You can't sit at all. If you're sick as a dog, you think you are not going to make it. Even if you vote and then pass away, it's worth it for now. Meanwhile, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley battled it out in the race for second place. DeSantis went all in on Iowa, visiting all 99 counties and receiving a rare endorsement from the state's governor. DeSantis, who grabbed the second place finish, is promising his voters he will continue to fight. Thank you. 